We ask you to come up to these bands.
the life of the living. That's what because God is life. Ain't nothing dead about him. Ain't nothing dead about him. I'm telling you, he has his life. And he yeah. gave us life. And he said we have what? More abundantly. Yeah. But we gotta jump in. Amen. We gotta have to say, take charge. Yeah. Take charge. You gotta take charge of your life. And let God be the Lord of your life. We thank God for all things and everything. We thank God for the quiet for that selection. We're gonna now get ready for the word. We thank God that's something we all need. Because in the word of God, we do have a rocky place. So we thank God, we thank God. Let's um, read our help, our families. Tina Griffin. Let's say amen. 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 amen.
And I thank God for, you know, children leave home, right? And sometimes they leave home because, you know, it gets a little uncomfortable, right? There's rules at home, you know, things go on if I get their own place, but it's still nothing like coming home to mama's table. When Thanksgiving happens, when things happen, they be happy to come home because they know it's stable, they know it's warm, they know it's right, praise God. They might have their own plenty stuff going on in their house, but they know what home has, praise God. So I thank God, I thank God for being home and just um, even being a product of that person. Amen. It's a blessing to um, have been under our relationship each and just all that was poured over the years. It's just a blessing to have a foundation. Amen. There's a lot of, um, I'm already in the message here. There's a lot of orphans out there. There's a lot of people that are not attached to a ministry. And that's not the way God intended for us. He, he intended for us to be within the body of Christ. And I think it might be uh, Psalms 92 and 13. It says that he that is planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. And I just believe that with all my heart that if you get planted in the house of the Lord, that you will flourish. Amen. And I just thank God for that all today. Hmm. God is so good. Amen. We're going to get to the word. Praise God. And um, God has me in the Old Testament today. Praise God. We're going to be in everybody's heard of First Samuel if you have it. If you have it on your phone, if you have it on your tablet, if you have it on your Bible. Any way that you get to it. Amen. We're going to be in First Samuel. Now, I'm so full, I don't know about a whole lot of preaching, but we're going to do some teaching on today, praise God. And, um, you know, as uh, the different ones were given their reflections yesterday, I was just listening to, somebody said that they had been around overseas since they were eight years old. And that, that stayed with me. Because we have young people that come through the house of the Lord. And you never know who they are. You don't know who those young people are. You don't know, you know, what God is doing in the heart of that person or who he birthed into the earth or what. And we thank God because we want to pay just as close attention to our young people as we do the older ones. So um, 1 Samuel, we're going to start in the ninth chapter. 1 Samuel, amen. And, um, I'm going to talk about a pattern of love today. Somebody say a pattern, a pattern. of love. A pattern of love, amen. And um, let's talk about that a little bit. And um, I want to acknowledge my husband and just thank God for him being here. And, amen. Um, amen. Thank God for him. And um, as I was reading through this, God was kind of talking to me about relationalism. And just how you should have a good relationship among the people that you serve with. Amen. And he was using these scriptures to bring some of that out. Amen. So we get into this. Amen. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you because your word is always good. Father, we thank you that we can't add to or take away from it, God. But we ask that you open up our ears for hearing on today, God. Yeah. Father, that you open up our hearts to receive your word, Lord God. Father, let something that is said resonate in the hearts of your people, Lord God. Father, we thank you because your word is so good. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So uh, I'm going to start at the, I'm going to start right at the first verse in the next chapter. I'm going to skip around a little bit. Stay with me. Amen. Um, it says, now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Ebiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bechorah, the son of Apia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. So this is just the intro. A lot of it I'm not gonna be able to read for the essence of time, but this is talking about Kish, and Kish was a Benjamite. The Benjamite tribe was the lowest tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel. And you've heard me talk about it probably before, the Benjamins. You think about the Benjamins, you think of Joseph. Joseph had a young brother named Benjamin. And that tribe came from him, and he was the youngest, and they were thought of as the least with power at the time. And out of this Benjamite tribe, all of the kings began to come out of the lowest tribe. Keep that in mind. The lowest tribe 
was the one that God began to pull the kings out. So number three says that the, the asses of Kish, and y'all children, that's donkeys, amen. I'm not cussing up here. The asses of Kish, Saul's, well, Saul's father were lost. So Saul, you know, Saul had a father. And Kish said to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee, and arise and go seek the asses. So the donkeys got missing. So he sent his son out. Notice he, somebody said he sent his son. Sound familiar, praise God? So there's a, there's a rhythm in here. There's a pattern of love in here, praise God. He said, he sent him out to go seek for the asses. And I'm going to read down. It says, and he passed through Mount Ephraim, and he passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found him not. And he passed through the land of Shalem, and they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found him not. And when they would come to the land of Zoom, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. He was saying, Maybe my father would be worried about me. You know, let's go back and we'll try to find him himself. Six says, And he said unto him, Behold, now, there is in the city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he saith cometh. Surely the past. Now let us go thither. Peradventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Hmm. You see how the story is changing, right? Praise God. He started out with just being a son, and he was going to do what his father sent him to do. And he was just seeking out for something that was just natural. He was just looking for what his father told him to do. But on the way, God had another plan. So it says, then Saul said to his servant, but behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring the man of God. What have we? See, they had a custom that if there was a prophet in the land, if there was a king, that if you went before that king or that prophet, that you had something in your hand, something to give. So he was concerned about that. You know, skip down to nine. It says, before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go see the seer. Somebody said seer. seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Amen. So it begins to just, you know, it's teaching us along the way. Amen. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So as Saul was traveling, amen, God had a plan for Saul. And Saul had no idea what the plan was. Now the people of God had a request. They were looking for something from God. They had begun to beckon from God because they had looked on other nations. And at this time, other nations that were not the nation of Israel, they had kings. They had something that they didn't have. The nation of Israel was to look to God for everything. That was the way God had it set up. They looked to him. And they were peering on what other nations had. Turn down to, um, let's go to 14. And then when they went up to the city, and when they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. Now we know Samuel, praise God. Samuel was uh, a son that had been prayed for. Somebody didn't have a child, and they were weeping on the altar. And the priest said to her that he thought that she was drunk. But God, she wanted a son. And she had the son, and she gave the son back to God. So Samuel was now a prophet of the land. It says that now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear that day before Saul came, saying, you notice that when he went to the man of God, he already had a word. He already knew that he was coming. Because God's plan and pattern of love was already in motion. God had already set it all up. 16 says, tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. Now this will be the key verse. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. This is the God that I know, praise God. This is the God that we serve, praise God. God looks because our cry is unto him. God's love for his people. He'll answer your cry. Whenever you have a, a wound 
going on, praise God. If you have a situation going, God will begin to put things in motion to answer your cry. 19 says, and Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me into the high place, for ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let thee go. And I will tell thee all that is in thine heart. Relation. How many times have you met someone, a man, a woman of God, you don't have to raise your hand or say anything, and you could not get close to them? And it seemed like they were guarded, and, and you know, you, you're serving with them, and you know them, and there's a blockage there. He said, come and eat with me. God had it set up where he would be able to uh, commune and have covenant with this person. This is someone that God chose. Samuel was chosen by God. Yeah. You notice that sometimes people get so big and they have so many titles that you can't get close to them. You can't make an appointment with them. You can't find time to have a conversation with them. You don't know how to contact them. You gotta go through somebody to go through somebody else to get in contact with the pastor yeah. or the prophet or the apostle. There's no way to get in contact with them. But according to the scripture here, he was very, very relational. It says, he said, you will eat with me today and tomorrow I will let thee go and will tell thee all that is in thy heart. He was gonna have a conversation with him. He was gonna commune with him. He was going to make sure there was clarity in their relationship. There was no, no uh, vagueness. Y'all cry. Everybody cry up in here. Amen. You ever have a relationship and you're not quite sure about the relationship? I think we're close. I think they love me. I'm not sure. Because there's no clarity. God is saying, where is the clarity in the body of Christ? There's a, a pattern of love that God wants us to follow after. There is no big I and no little you. And I have this and you don't. And my gift is big and I know how to do it. No, there's none of that in the house of God. God wants us to know that we have to be relational around one another, praise God. It's time for us to, to eat together. Amen. It's time for us to get to know one another. Scripture says, know them that labor among you. What is the labor? There's a war going on, praise God. We are fighting in the kingdom of God. We are in the kingdom of God, and we are, somebody say, taking it, taking it by, force. by force. We are not lying down and letting the enemy have our families. We're coming against that. He, not, he can't have our finances. We're not okay with that. He can't have our emotions. He's not allowed in our mind. He just can't do nothing with us, praise God. So we're all on the same mind frame. We're all fighting, amen. We're all in a war, yes. but just to let you know, we're all in it together. Amen. This is not a separate war. We all go off to our corners. You know, oh, I'm fighting over here. I don't know what you're doing. I'm fighting over here. The scripture says that one will chase a thousand, right. but two will put ten thousand to flight, praise God. Yes. So if we get together and begin to know that we are together, the Lord can join us in the room, praise God. Amen. 21 says, and Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamin of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family and the least of families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou this to me? He started saying, Wow, like, I'm not worthy of this. This is not what's supposed to fall in my family line. This is not what I know that God is saying. 25 says, uh, uh, and when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. Remember, Samuel was the prophet in the land. Samuel was the Obama of the Old Testament, praise God. Samuel was somebody that, that, that could, could hear directly from God. He had a presence with God. God had chosen him, praise God. He was the, he was the person of the land. You didn't hear. There wasn't a message that was coming through anybody else. He was an appointed and an anointed prophet. But he took the time out and he began to commune with him. Praise God. So it says, Saul upon the top of the house. He spent time with him. And it says that he arose early and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house saying, up, 
that I may send thee away. And Saul arose and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel abroad. They began to go out among the people, praise God. And it says, after they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may show ye the word of God. He had communed with him. He took time with him. He began to know him. I believe he wanted to make sure that, that he knew the ways of the Lord. He didn't right. want him to just, like there's, there's now people of God who have these titles and this status. And, 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 and it's totally separate from what God is saying. Because God has called us into the earth to equip the saints. Amen. That's what we're here for. Amen. If you have been called to do a work for the Lord, no matter what the work is, Amen. God has called you and equipped you yes. for the people of God. Amen. It's the people of God that need to be able to touch you. They need to be able to get contact with you. They need to know that you're a loving person. Yes. They need to know that you're honest and that you're trustworthy. Right. And they should be able to know you intimately, praise God, so that they can gain from you. Amen. Amen. So here he's just giving us an example of this, praise God. So when we go a little farther, we're gonna get into get into the rest of it. Praise God. Turn to ten, Amen. We're gonna we're gonna wind up right here. Ten and one. Uh, First Samuel ten and one. It says then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be the captain over his inheritance? This was an anointing that was going on. God had already told Samuel. Samuel knew who Saul was before Saul knew himself. Samuel knew he was not just the son of Kish, but he knew who this man was. He had an anointing. Somebody say anointing. He had an anointing upon his life. Amen. And in this day, they were young. Amen. If they were watching the donkeys. Amen. If they were still subject to their father, they were young, praise God. They were 14 and 15 years old, amen. You became a man at 13 in the Jewish tradition, amen. Anybody 13, 14, 15, we got a few, praise God. God is already looking into your life. Amen. God has already made plans for you, praise God. He began to make plans for Saul early, praise God. And it says, and the spirit of the Lord, somebody say the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. He was telling them, amen. And it says, and it be, when these signs are coming to thee, that thou do and as an occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. God was going to be with him, amen. And it was so that when he had turned his back, somebody said, turn his back, to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they had came thither to the hill, behold, the company of prophets met him. See, they were, they were prophets in the land, amen. And they weren't just one prophet, but they were a company of prophets. One of the scriptures says that there was a school of prophets. A prophet is a messenger from God. A prophet is a person that has been sent to hear mouth to mouth from God. And not only do they hear from God, but they don't hear from God and get big-headed within their self, but they deliver the message. And they bring the message to the people of God for encouragement, yes. for comfort, yes. exhortation. That is the job of the prophet. So there was a whole, whole group of prophets, amen. And it says that it came to pass when all that knew him before saw that. This is 11. It says, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, what is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? They were, they were amazed, amen. They were amazed because God had given him another heart. A change had come about him, amen. It says God will, he will just take a common person to, to fix a complicated situation, amen. And that's, that's where I want to get at, amen. It's a of love and what it is that Jesus would do, what God would do is that he will pick a common person, the person that you least expect, amen, and while they're going up one side of the stairway they'll be coming down the other side of the stairway and all of a sudden they're a brand new person amen. and then they get in your atmosphere and you're looking and you're like, what is this? I'm here to tell you that that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. There's a pattern of love and God did this. He didn't just do this for history. He didn't just do this for us to, to pick out the scripture and say, oh, this is interesting. But he was doing this because he was moving towards Christ coming into the earth. Right. So 
God. There was a communion that was there. You remember that word? He communed with them, praise God. And they, they walked with God in the cool of the day. God talked with them. What did he have to talk to them about? My spiritual father said they had no bills. <laughs> they didn't have no complaints. Right. What were they begging in God about? What was the conversation? Lord, I need this. They had everything they needed. Everything was all set up for them. The enemy hadn't even begun to, to walk in the garden yet and do anything. But they had conversation with God. And they communed with him. They had a, a, a relationship. So when, when sin came in, that relationship was torn. Yes. And we began on the other side of God. Jesus. But I know a man named Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And when Jesus came on the scene, amen, not only did he commune in the power of love, but he began to bring the relationship back with God, praise God. Yeah. And that was, that's what we want to get to, praise God. We want to look at the fact that Samuel was the beginning of the walk towards the cross, amen. God was using him as a pattern to show how you commune with people. I'm going to pick this one out. And, and all the way through the Bible, I'm just going to have just little pieces for you to look at. I'm going to take Amos, and he's going to do this. And I'm going to take Hosea, and he's going to do this part. And I'm going to take Samuel, and he's going to do this part. But with my own arm, I'm going to bring salvation back. Jesus. Right. And Jesus Christ came as God in the flesh, and he loves us. Yes. And it was the love of God. The whole Bible is a love story. It's a love story. And when you look at the Bible, don't look at the Bible uh, for a history book. Don't look at the Bible as, as a, a, a comic book. Some kids think that just because David and Goliath is in cartoon form, that it's a coloring book. But when you look at that word, it's all about love. Yes. It's the love that God has for us. He went and he handpicked Saul because he wanted to show that if you ask me for anything, even if it's not good for you, if you ask me for anything, I will do. And God did this for them, and they brought Saul, and, and, and he had him anointed, praise God. He, God gave him another heart. Amen. And when you look at what another heart is, there's a scripture that says that when you be in Christ, you become a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away, yes. and behold, all things become new. Yes. So if you have something going on with you, praise yes. God, just know that if you're in Christ, yes. God says that all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That means that if you was alive and praise God, then that's no longer a part of you. That if you was walking in sin, you was one of the people that was unmentionable, praise God. That God is not looking at that anymore. That the love of God, amen. There's a love of God. There's a pattern of God that goes all the way down through the Old Testament and comes into the New Testament, amen. He wants us to know that I started way back then. And I'm showing you the pattern of love all Amen. When he got to it is finished, he was letting us know that what was finished, that the law was finished, amen. That that old covenant that he had set up that was too rough and too hard for us, that God had said that that covenant was no more. But he said that if there was nothing wrong with the old covenant, amen. Hebrews 8 and 7, that it would be no need for me to talk with a new covenant, amen. But the new covenant is Jesus Christ, amen. When you look
you've been. God is not concerned about the way that you once was walking. God is saying, I need you to see yourself as I see you. So that you begin to, to work with people, praise God. So you begin to, to walk in sincerity. And let the love of God begin to exude from you, praise God. God is saying that I have called you out. And I'm going to work on that heart. He said he gave him another heart. He did a heart operation, praise God. He was going up one side of the garden. And he came back down and he said, who is this? Is that the son of Kish? Some of them are saying, who is this? Is this, is this Israel? Who is that speaking over there on the other side, praise God? Is that Samaria? Samaria was just playing with her toys, praise God. But God is saying, I'm calling you. You are the one that I have need of. Because there's work that needs to be done, praise God. And some might say, what, what's the work? What is that that needs to be done? God says that, and he called some. He called some. He called some apostles. And he called some prophets. And some evangelists. And some teachers. And some pastors. And that is for the equipping and the perfecting of the saints of God. God is calling us to perfect the church. So that the church will become strong. So that the people of God will be disciple. So that they will be loved. So that they will commune with us, praise God. I have a challenge, praise God. I have a challenge, amen, that if you believe that God has called you, that you begin to see God like never before. God, what is my assignment? What exactly will you have for me to do in this season, amen? What do you have for me? And the, 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 the lesson that I was looking at, praise God, is reading in between the lines, amen, is that Saul had a father, and his father sent him out. He did not go out on his own. He was not searching and looking aimlessly. But he had a goal. He was looking for the donkeys. He was sent, and he went out. We are not to go out on our own. God will plant you in a house where you can flourish, and God will send you forth through a cinder. It's very important to know that. You must be sent. You are not to go out on your own. Some of us go out on our own and we're like those animals. You ever watch the uh, Nature Channel? And there'll be a whole bunch of tigers, amen. Bears and, you know. And then you'll have the little giraffes, amen. And they'll start separating. You know, they're they together. Everything's good. They're running. They're running the path. And then you have one little naughty one that will get behind. And all of a sudden you see a wolf or something just snatch it up. Because they didn't stay in the path. You have got to stay close to the leader. You have to stay close to the leadership. You have to stay close to God. Because God has a plan for your life. And his plan is in order. Patterns of love. Amen. God's pattern for love always follows the pattern of a sent son. Jesus Christ came as a sent son. We look at this pattern, and what do we see? Another sent son. He wasn't orphaned. He wasn't alone. He wasn't out there. Somebody, nobody knew who he belonged to. He was a part of a, 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 a legacy, amen. And when he became a part of a legacy, then the anointing could be poured upon him. Because he was connected to something. You don't just go to City Hall when it's time for them to read off somebody's will and say, I think I'm in there. Do you? <laughs> when somebody passes away, there's a set thing that happens. And the inheritance goes to the sons, the daughters, the ones that are in the will, praise God. So you don't just walk up somewhere and decide that mm, this is going to drop to me. This favor is coming to me. But you have to be set. You have to be set by God under so that you know that when God is time to bless me, that he'll be able to bless me because I did everything, somebody say, decent, decent. and order. And that's the way that God works with us, praise God. So we thank God for that one today, praise God. I'm just going to, you know, we're going to pray, amen. I try to make sure that I leave enough time for us to pray. And, um, very, very important to know that God's patterns are love. And I, I appeal to the young people that are here on today. Because
because a lot of times your only way to see God is through the eyes of the adult that's in front of you. Amen. And I share with you on today that God is love. God is kind. God wants you. God desires you. And he's looking on you and desiring you. God is not um, a big old mean person in the sky that checks off all of your do's and your don'ts and you shouldn't have did this and you shouldn't have did that. God is delighted when we wake up in the morning, praise God. Because we are his creation. And he loves us, praise God. Let us stand to our feet, praise God. And we want to pray. Amen. Y'all know I pray a little bit different, praise God. So we're all going to get involved in the prayer, amen. 